<coughs> skip forward to the uh, salutation to the triple gem, which is, uh, begins on page 21. Tandamayang Ratanataya Phanamakata Yoje Watham Wake Up Body Kitten Up Batanja Banama Now let us chant our salutation to the Triple Gem and the passage of encouragement. Bhurdha Sutta Karuna Mahana the Buddha absolutely pure, with ocean-like compassion. Yajanda Sudha Paranyana Lojano, possessing the clear sight of wisdom. Lokasa Papu Pakile Sagadako, destroyer of worldly self-corruption. Vandami Bhutan Ahamadare Natan Devotedly indeed that Buddha I revere Namo Padipo Vyatasa Sadhuno The teaching of the Lord like a lamp Yamaka Bhaka Madhabe Nabi Nako Illuminating the path and its fruits are deathless. The good arroyo, chakarana dipano, that which is beyond the conditioned world. One dami dhamma dhamma dharena dham, devotedly indeed that dhamma I revere. Sangho Suketa Bayati Keta Sanyito The Sangha is the most fertile ground for cultivation Yodita Sangho Sukhata Nupojako Those who have realized peace Awakened after the accomplished one Lola Padino Adio Sumeda So Noble and Wise O Long in Abandon Wandami Sangha Nama Dharina Tang Devotedly indeed that Sangha I revere Each Ewa Mekha Dhabi Pujanaya Kang this salutation should be made. Wandunayang Wandayata Bisangatang to that which is worthy. Punyang Mayayang Mamasabhumadhava to the power of such good action. Mahontu Vedasamapavasthidhya May all obstacles disappear. Hidatatagatoloke upano arahansama samburdo. One who knows things as they are has come into this world and he is an arahant, a perfectly awakened being. Namo jade sitonia niko upasamiko parinim panito sambo dakami sukhantam pavedito purifying the way leading out of delusion, calming and directing to perfect peace and leading to enlightenment. This way he has made known. Mayan dang tam mang sutawa ewan janama. Having heard the teaching, we know this. Jati pidukha, birth is dukha. Jara pidukha, aging is dukha. Maradam pidukha. 
the blessed one who long ago attained Parinipada is our refuge. Dhamanja Sanganja. So to the Tama and the Sangha. Tatsa Bhagavato Sasana Yatasati Yatabhavan Manasi Karoma Anupati Pajama. Attentively we follow the pathway of that Blessed One with all of our mindfulness and strength. Sasano pati pati. May then the cultivation of this practice e matsa kevalatsa dukkha kandatsa anda kiriyaya sangvatatu lead us to the end of every kind of suffering.
uh, composing, bringing attention to the here and now, the way it is. This just noticing, being present, breathing, body sitting, sound of silence. So these are is just observing the way it is. It's not thinking about how things should be. So really Notice this ability we have to compose ourselves, not when we start thinking about ourselves and the world, then we are pulled out into feelings of, you know, wanting or not wanting, dreading, hoping, expecting, planning for the future, regretting the past. The whole realm of dukkha starts operating. But just in awareness, there's no dukkha. No suffering. So, the, like discerning or banya, the Pollywood banya, wisdom, discernment, it, to know that suffering is like this, non suffering is like this, uh, self is like this, non self is like this. So, discernment. Attachment is like this, non-attachment is like this. As a way of informing yourself, know clearly the way it is. And then the path uh, is apparent because the path of non-suffering is non-attachment, non-self, non-suffering. And when there's self and with self and suffering, attachment, then we're back in the realm of dukkha. So we have the what they call the sukha parite wa tukha tomanasa upayasa apye sampa yoko tuko piye vipa yoko tuko yampi jang na lapati dampi tukang. That's suffering. In the teaching of the dependent origination, Paticca Samupada, this is, I found this very worthy one to reflect on. <clears throat> because it, it always starts out, and, and these are, this relates to the Four Noble Truths, so the, 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 uh, Begin, the first part is about the second noble truth, and the uh, third is the second half is about the Niroda, or the third noble truth. There you have Avicca, Bhajaya, Sankara, Sankara, Bhajaya, Vijnana, and so forth, too. 
Toka Parite wa Tuka Tomanar. So this is like like Avicca, ignorance of Dhamma. This is the cause of suffering. Whatever whatever we start, when we come from Avicca, from a self view, from conceit, from from liking, disliking, from uh, the created world and attachment to it and an identity, then the result's always going to be suffering. Now this is this isn't the doctrine, so it's it's to be reflected on, you know, to you're internalizing this paticca samupada. It's not meant to be some kind of intellectual theory. But just starting from the beginning, if avicca is I'm sitting here with pain in my knees and I'm trying to practice meditation in order to become enlightened. So I start with a bicha and after an hour sitting here, I end up with dukkha. So this is also uh, conveys this, the vicha, you know, when we start from ignorance of the truth, then it affects everything, our emotional, our body, our emotions, the five tandas are affected by that avicca. So you have the uh, avicca, bhajaya, sankhara, and the sankharas include all phenomena or conditions, uh, sankar bhajaya vinyana consciousness is then affected by this avicca, and then uh, vinyana bhajaya nama rupa nama rupa salayatana pasa vedana and so forth to to uh, the to the way that the whole <clears throat> process starts operating uh, affected by avicca. So how we perceive and experience life is. Is, uh, is going to be uh, the experience of dukkha. How could it be otherwise? So then we have dan, uh, vedana, fatsa vedana, dana, ubadana, the, the impingement on the senses of the, the feeling that comes from that and then the reaction to that, a form of clinging. If it's pleasant, we want to hold on. If it's miserable, we want to get rid of it. Dhanha, uh, desire, attachment. Bhava, becoming, we become. Uh, jati, we're reborn, becoming, born into that state which leads to Sokha Pariteva, Tukatomana Supayasa, uh, grief, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair, the, the dukkha. So this is interesting just to explore, like, like this Dhanha Ubadana, or Pasa Vedana Dhanha Ubadana, So that these these terms uh, are, you know, that with their English translations, are kind of ways of reflecting on experience here and now. Then um, the third noble truth is about niroda or cessation. So sankara, with with right understanding, with vicha, when there's no avicca, then then the whole thing disintegrates. Niroda takes place. So whatever point in the in in you know you. 
you awaken, then the whole process stops, just ceases. So that a vicha, then what is vicha or knowledge of the truth? And for me, this is a stillness of the mind. There's no self. So it's not like I've I kind of studied Buddhism for years and come out with some theory about no self. Because that's another, you know, word, another conceit maybe that I might be attached to. But in the emptiness of the moment, uh, vicha is like no self. This is no self. then there's no suffering and no dukkha as a result. So consciousness can still operate in that, but, it, you know, the thing is, one isn't unconscious or dead or anything like that, but the, the process, the, the kind of ignorance, the, the, the rising of suffering out, out of ignorance ceases at the very moment you awaken You're mindful, in other words. So like the third noble truth, as I say, the second noble truth is the insight of letting go. The three aspects of the second noble truth is uh, cause, the causes of suffering are uh, a, a bicha, ignorance of truth, uh, desire, the three kinds of desire and attachment and identity that comes to, through that ignorance, then the insight is to let go. Release yourself from that trap of desire, not, not suppressing it, but leaving it be. Accepting that but letting it be. In other words, it's like desires that go on, you're aware, but you're, you find yourself attached to desire, then tell yourself, let go of the desire. And just let it be. And then you begin to see the desire as, a, as an object, not rather than being the person with desire. Desire is what it is, and it ceases. So then letting go, putting down these kind of words, you know. Then the then the <clears throat> then you the the third insight of the second noble truth is letting go has been accomplished. You know what it is, you know the reality of it. And it's not just some idea or that you you're trying to let go anymore, you actually know the reality. Letting go has, is like this, non-attachment, letting go, letting be. Which takes us to the Niroda, Satcha, or the Third Noble Truth of cessation. If you let go of desire, its nature, because it arises, it ceases. And you have this perspective on cessation. You're letting, you're letting the natural flow take place, the rising and ceasing of sankharas. You're no longer the, the, the creature that's trying to control things and keep something that has arisen that you like or get rid of everything that is painful and unpleasant. The conditions that are rise that are painful, unpleasant, you want to get rid of them. The endless struggle and dukkha that's caused from, from that resistance to life or, or the trying to hold on to everything. Trying to hold on to the good stuff and trying to, is an endless struggle. 
which you'll never win, you'll never, you'll always lose. Because avicca is the cause of suffering. Avicca is death itself. So then vicha comes from letting things cease. It isn't it isn't getting rid of anything, but it's allowing things that have arisen to cease. And realizing this, cessation is like this. So the insight is into uh, the third noble truth is there is the end of suffering. Uh, It should be realized. So it's uh, Satika Dapandi, who is the realizing the truth. <clears throat> Realization, recognition, non attachments like this, non sufferings like this, non self is like this. So you're in this natural state of poised attention and inner poise an openness, receptivity, where you see things as they are. There's a knowing, not from concepts, ideas, theories, views, opinions, positions, feelings, but what we call jnana dasana, or insight knowledge. Jnana is knowledge, is a, a profound knowledge, insight knowledge. It's not just intellectual knowledge, knowing knowing about things, having perceptions for conditions, but will uh, a profound no- wisdom knowledge. So the discerning then is like with the emptiness sound of silence, explore, the, create yourself intentionally. I used, used to create myself in all different, you know, my fears and my uh, good side, my, my, my conceits and my fears and myself as a person and listen to this personality that self self is like that it's a creation I have to think I have to create myself to be my personality I have to really believe in in my feelings or me and this body is me I have to really you know get lost in the conviction that this is really me, this body is really me and my feelings and memories and then operate from this sense of me is like this, self is like this. So you, you're observing self and, and this, when, when I create myself, even in this intentional way, just by hearing this me and mine and what I think and what I like and don't like, you know, it's, it's not peaceful. I can't create a peaceful tomato. Because uh, the very, uh, you know, creation of a self is itself changing and unsatisfactory. So it doesn't lead to peace, it only leads to suffering. But I'm doing this not from some kind of Buddhist theory that everything's suffering, but from observing what is suffering. To become a person, to become a self, is is always like being creating yourself with, with is something un, unsatisfactory, incomplete, unfulfilled, imperfect. 
death bound. But then non self then I then I stay in the stillness, the silence, the nada. So I'm letting go of the concepts, the memories, the, the, uh, the identities with the five khandhas. But the consciousness is still present. But I'm not in, in projecting into consciousness anything. It's still and discerning. So I don't go into a trance, you know, I'm not kind of blissed out in any way or in some, you know, kind of lost in some heavenly realm or some, you know, or just uh, out of it. I'm fully present, but it, but there's, this is non-self. So it's like the discerning, the panya, you're discerning that non-self is like this. Anatta is this. Non-attachment is this. Like to create myself, I don't have to attach to the perceptions and uh, memories, assumptions I have about myself as a person. Non- non-attachment is like this. So it's empty, but consciousness is complete, full, empty, no self, no, non-attachment, non-suffering. You see what I'm pointing at is discerning, knowing, discerning the difference between suffering and non-suffering. Self and non-self, attachment, non-attachment. Like Nibbana is the realization of non-attachment. the reality of non-attachment. So by discerning this way, the path becomes very clear. You know, if the path of suffering is by attaching to everything Believing in yourself as these limited conditions and wallowing in misery. That's, you take that direction. <laughs> but I assume because you're here at Spirit Rock, you, you know, you're trying to get out of that one, find a way out of that trap into non suffering. Nibbana, liberation, enlightenment, whatever, whatever words you want to refer to, it's like this. And then it's, you know, but I'm not looking for anything. It's like it's non-attachment, non-self. It's not projecting, looking, wanting, expecting anymore, but recognizing. Reality is this way. The illusory world is through attachment. We can be, you know, ask each one of you, or what, how you what your world is like. We think we all live in the same world as, pe- as personalities, don't we? But every one of us lives in a world of our own creation. You know, so we share certain things in common, but so much of our life is, you know, just very personal and unique to ourselves. That world we create is, you know, is a, it's not the objective world that we believe we're really uh, living in, but we're living in a world of our own creation. 
<clears throat> that's what I'm talking about. It's so difficult relating to others, isn't it, to each other, because we're coming from different worlds. Sometimes you feel you're living with a bunch of aliens. So letting the world go, then the natural state of being is consciousness, which is not a world that we create. We create our worlds in, project them into consciousness, but when we stop doing that, letting go of the world, then consciousness and wisdom are aligned, and uh, we can for, instruct Conscious, this conscious moment with wisdom, discerning, rather than with ignorance and attachment to ignorant views. So the cessation, the third noble truth, this is, uh, you know, this is emptiness, this is deathlessness. This is where you have that insight that, and that scene of the path, because the eightfold path then appears. You know, this is the path, this is a certainty, it's not, it's not just theoretical anymore. Or, you know, you're not trying to find it, you know it. This is it. Non-suffering, non-self, non-attachment. So then cultivating this, this, uh, and this is the pavana, the word pavana again, cultivate, developing awareness in daily life. And this is what, I'm saying what monasticism is all about, supposed to be anyway, is a conventional form for cultivating the path, uh, just a, a expedient means. And the Buddha established a monastic sangha. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't to make an elite priesthood or, you know, make us into some kind of, you know, caste. Uh, but to uh, just a convention that, uh, ha if used properly, then is, is helps develop or cultivate this path. Because, uh, let's say, the symbol, the robes, the, the arms mendicancy, the, everything around it is, is not meant for grasping, but for reminding you know, for cultivating awareness. So when we talk about stream entry, sotapanna, well, these uh, four stages, uh, 
and the twelve fetters. And I found these very helpful reflections on, you know, just the experience. Because uh, these are really brilliant teachings. They're not meant to be taken as some kind of attainment. And you're going to say, I'm a soda pana. I've got a certificate. <laughs> and I've seen that in Thailand. There used to be one monastery who gave certificates. Or going around claiming you're an arahant or whatever, but uh, these are, you know, this is this is against the vinaya, you know, the, the kind of if you're, it's a rajika or a disrobing offense if you go around deluding people by claiming you're you've attained, you're in these stages of attainment. They sound like attainments, <clears throat> and you're not. You know, if your just intention is to delude others. You know, so the Varachikas are a serious offenses of kind of bloody-minded um, intention to delude. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, if one is going around announcing oneself as an enlightened master in order to, you know, get a following uh, so you can uh, get their money. <laughs> that would be like Varachika. But sometimes also in uh, meditation we, get, we experience blissful states where we think we're enlightened. So we go into a very nice peaceful state. I remember going, doing this. I was at Samanera, I was in this very blissful state for a long time. I thought, I'm enlightened now. This must be uh, what an arahant is like. I never felt like this before. <laughs> so I... <clears throat> then, I, then I had to, you know, it worked. So I stayed that way for quite a few days, and then I had to go to the immigration office. <laughs> I don't know what happened to the arahant, but it disappeared. But that is an um, that is no barachika offense for monks. Just you know, we overestimate or out of you know just overestimation or delusion, we we can think we've attained. <clears throat> but so these are they're not to be taken as personal things. Like Ajahn Chah never say anything. We bother you, a, a, an arahant. He he never imply that he was or wasn't. Because this isn't, doesn't make any sense, really. You don't become anything like that. You don't become an arahant. <clears throat> These are uh, references for looking at experience. They're helpful teachings that help us to, to you know, to get perspective on, on the kind of obstructions, the fetters that, that uh, we attach to, that blind us to the path. So it's not like getting a BA, MA, PhD. <laughs> so we, we, even the word attainment, they're not attainments. You don't attain. It's, it's more, it's a relinquishing thing. You remember, well, the spiritual path is all about relinquishment, not attaining. You don't get anything. It's learning to let go of everything. Anything you get, you're going to lose. <clears throat> so that's where you know you can get special states, refined experiences, and elevated uh, conscious blissful states, but they, you can't, they're not sustainable, you know, they're, because they're created, they're dependent on condition. But this uh, awareness is not dependent. This path, Eightfold Path, is not dependent on conditions being any certain way.
that is not an attainment or achievement. But language does give that impression. You read it in the Pali Canon and so forth, they do sound like attainments. Because it's just language, really. Language is dualistic. So you've got to recognize the limitation of thinking and language and not, not bind yourself to that limitation. But language can be useful you know, like the Dhamma teachings used with awareness. That's what they're for. They're not meant to t- be positions you take on life and, and attach to Buddhist ideas and Buddhist concepts. Uh, you know, on the, just, but to use these concepts for investigating reality in the present. So like the Patikya Samupad is not some kind of theory, complicated theory that that you have to believe in. Or there's various, you know, controversies in the Sangha about, you know, Patikya Samupada and three lives and or simultaneous arising and monks love to have arguments about this. Some take very rigid stands, you know, it has to be three lives. And then they then they find quotes from the scriptures of proving this. And then then there's a simultaneous arising. And they can find quotes and use even the same quotes to prove their theory. So it's a trick the intellect's pretty tricky, you know. And you, you can almost justify any position you want to take by quoting the scriptures. <laughs> so it's not an intellectual process that we're, we're encouraging, but using the intellect, uh, you know, in a skillful way to look at the reality of this moment. To awaken to it. Observe it. So when they talked about realization of cessation, I like that word rea- realization because it's a common enough word in you know in just ordinary parlance. Of, if you realize that, and you realize what you're saying, and it's kind of used as um, in, in all different ways, but it, in this context, it's, it's reality, awakening to reality, the reality of this moment. Says things, see, the conditions cease. Cessation is like this. Niroda, when suffering ceases, what's left? When self, when the self, the ego ceases, when there's no attachment, when attachment ceases, this is non-suffering. So there's still consciousness. I'm not unconscious or in a trance. But cessation is like this. So it's like you're really, you know, it's, it's this discerning, it's sati and panya and consciousness in, the, in this present moment here and now, pachubana dhamma, is like this. Now really noticing, you know, this is, this is not just some kind of, you know, flippant um, tinkering with, with consciousness and playing with words, but it's a real obs- of a discernment, recognition, through, through noticing, really, really knowing what self is when becoming this ego, this, and be, being attached to desires and 
and the suffering that results, really knowing this, not, not just reacting to it with some wish to get rid of it, but explore suffering, really open to it as first noble truth, really understand it, receive it, accept it, look into it, explore it, investigate it, get to the root of it, and understand it, the causes of suffering, you know, desire, not just get rid of desire, but, but it's to know desire. What is desire? You can know desire because you're not a desire. You can observe desire. If you were desire, you wouldn't, one desire can observe another desire. But you can observe desire as, it, as you're experiencing it. So desire arises, I want something, when it becomes I want to get rid of something, is like this. So what is it that observes? What knows this desire? Is not desire, is it? It's not, there's no desire in awareness. Awareness is a, can observe desire as an object. It's a, what they call aramana in Pali, or it's mental object. Desire arises and ceases. According to conditions, things stimulate you and, de- and then the desires arise. You don't have the same desire as a kind of continuum forever in your consciousness. They, they arise and cease according to all the conditions present that are affecting your conscious moment. So the aim is to to rec- realize this consciousness and inform it with panya, discerning, to know the difference between condition and uncondition. The condition is like this, unconditioned is like this. And so this is, you know, the watching, observing. So, say, just noticing the body sitting here, you know, this form. Still here, it's a condition. If I start attaching to it, you know, I'm this body, then it, it seems like I become, I become this, this body, and, and, they, and then the uh, whole, sets off the whole drama of being this body. You know, I'm a man, I'm a uh, 70 year old, I'm an old man. I'm a monk. (laughs) And all these things, you know, start, you know, the, the whole world of being an old man called Lumpo Sumato goes into operation. That world arises, but if if uh, there's awareness, then uh, then that world doesn't arise. Things are as they are. The body is still, you know, condition that's seventy years old, but there's no, non-attachment. So non-attachment is like this, non-self. and on suffering. So then, by this reflectiveness investigation, then we see the path, because the path is very clear, very precise. It's not a kind of fuzzy, kind of difficult uh, thing that you're not quite sure whether it is a path or not. This is the path. <laughs> but to, to know this path, you have to you know, use this panya, this panya family, not just ideas about whether you can see the path or not, or whether you're, what you think is a path is true or false, or what, you know, because then you're caught in, back into the thinking process, ideas and sense of yourself, and, and that's not the path. 
That is the path to death, in other words. As a pomado macho no padana. Heedless, heedlessness is the way to death. Apamado amata padana. Mindfulness, the path to the deathless. Amata padang. Amata is deathless. Apamado is heedfulness, being heedful, being mindful, present, is the amata padang, is the deathless. Pamado is a Pali word for being heedless, not mindful, is the way to death. Machuno padang. Machuno padang is the path to death. So the attachment to the body, identity with it, the self views, and all the rest, the sankaras, is the path to death. The machuno padang. <clears throat> By identifying and limiting yourself to that, then you you always have this fear of death. You know you. Fear of loss, fear of suffering, fear of failure, fear of sickness, fear of everything. Because in the future, all that's going to happen, isn't it? You get older, you don't get younger. You get weaker. You get diseases and body weakens and uh, then it dies. So in terms of you know, the conditioned realm, this this is just the way it is. So as long as my identity is with death, then then the, you know, out of ignorance, then I'm caught in this fear. So I need to be frightened of on that level. But uh, in discerning the deathless then that fear doesn't is no longer a problem because you know the deathless is the reality, not the, and you're no longer uh, so convinced and so aligned with the death-bound conditions. You let them go, release yourself from that limitation. with the Buddha's words on loving kindness This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, Contented and easily satisfied, unburdened with duties, and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, 
not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety may all beings be at ease. Whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another, or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life a child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, free from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding, by not holding to fixed views, the pure-hearted one, having clarity of vision, being free from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. The Lord, the perfectly enlightened and blessed one, I render homage to the Buddha, the blessed one. So I can't do my God and the teaching so completely explained by him. Dhammang namasami, I bow to the Dhamma. Supati panno bhagavato sawaka sango. The blessed one's disciples who have practiced well, Sangang Namami, I bow to the Sangha. 